Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex and you are watching BC Adventure. Today we're going to be revisiting Pi Hole as a lot of comments have come through on my previous video about not understanding how to set up the password initially. And I believe that's because people are using that tutorial for systems other than Unraid. Um, because some of the, some of the questions that have been coming in have been saying, well, that's not how you set the password. That's, I can't find the password. So I'm going to show you, uh, from a fresh installation, how to get Pi Hole set up again. And I'm going to demonstrate for you how to set the password without going through the logs and get your initial password set using the console within Unraid. Now, if you are not using Unraid, I can't guarantee what the command in your console is going to be. This is a Unraid specific tutorial. Another thing that I wanna show you is something stupid Plex has been doing really quickly and it's been driving me up the wall. And that is my recently added TV shows is showing stuff from when I rebuilt my Plex server and added all my media again. So basically it's saying that Seinfeld is the last thing that I've recently added to my server and I can tell you that that is not the case. So for me to actually see recently added TV shows that have been added to my Plex server, I have to go over to TV shows and then recommended always takes a few seconds to load up and then it's under recently released episodes. But before, recently added used to be uh, up to date. So anything that was added to the server, the last thing that was added would be updated in recently added. And for months, it's not been updating. It's just been sitting exactly like this for months. And I, I know it's a silly little complaint, but it's something that's been driving me absolutely up the wall. And uh, another uh, tick in my checklist of why Plex is really going downhill. So I just wanted to point that out because I know I got quite a bit of hate in my uh, Plex 2025 video. But yeah, I just wanted to, to mention that. But uh, like I said, we're going to be jumping into the Raspberry Pi installation. And uh, I will show you that I have completely removed Raspberry Pi or sorry, Pi Hole from uh, my Docker containers here. And we're going to be doing a complete fresh install. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so to get started, we're going to head on over to our apps tab and we are going to search for Pi Hole. And from there, we're going to use the official bin hex uh, repository and we're going to do install. And then it's letting us know that one of these ports is already being used. However, we're going to set a uh, specific IP address for this instance. Now, the reason we're doing that is because it just keeps things nice and simple. And then it also makes it so that we can uh, just point our devices directly to it or our router. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to do both uh, using a Unify UDM Pro and uh, as well as sitting, setting it uh, client side if you don't want all your devices uh, using this DNS. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do it client side so uh, you can set it per device if you like. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the network type to custom and you're going to need to find a free IP address on your network. So you can do that using your router or tools that you can download to your iPhone or Android. Uh, I've already gone ahead and picked a free IP address. So I'm going to be using 192.168.1.5. And then that is pretty much it. We don't need to do anything else uh, with the settings here. Um, we're just going to go ahead and click apply and it's going to go ahead and download from the uh, Pi Hole repository and get it installed. So once this is done, we will jump right back into it. So that actually finished pretty quickly. So we're gonna scroll down here and then click done. And then for good measure, we're gonna go over to our Docker tab and we are going to look at the logs. 
So here we see that it is good to go. So we can go ahead and open up the Docker. So to do that, we're gonna click on the Docker container here and we're gonna go to Web UI. And right off the bat, we see that uh, we don't have a password for this. So if we click on forget password, it's actually going to give you the uh, console command that we need to copy and paste or type into our Docker console. So I believe this is where the confusion has come. So if you're not using Unraid and you're just installing this on a Linux machine or a Windows machine or a Mac machine, the commands may be different. And I have posted a couple of the commands on my last video. And uh, anytime I posted the one that you're seeing here, I would get comments saying, well, that's no longer the way to do it. However, on Unraid using the Docker console, it 100% is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this and we're going to go back over to our uh, Pi-hole Docker and we're going to click on console. Now what that does is it brings up a console directly into the Docker container. So what we need to do is, again, just to show you what the uh, command is, it is pihole set password. So in our console, we need to put in pihole set password. And that's it. And if we hit enter, it's going to ask us to put in our password or just leave it blank for no password. So I'm going to go ahead and set a password. I'm going to confirm that password. And that is it. It is now set. And that's all you have to do to get your first instance of Pi-hole set up. So if we come back here to the login screen, all we need to do is put in that password we set and then click login. And that is it. We are now inside of our Pi-hole instance. Now it does come with a block list that's pre-built and it has 224,000 uh, domains on that list. Now if we click on manage list, it's going to let us know that we need to run another command to make sure that this is up to date. So we're going to go ahead and just copy this command, which you can do with the set password one as well. We're going to go back to our Docker here and we're going to open up the console again. And then we're just going to paste that command in and press enter. And what it's doing is it's refreshing that uh, database or law or sorry, um, uh, block list with uh, the latest and greatest uh, additions to it. So that is pretty much it with getting Pi-hole set up here. Uh, now let's go over and set up our DNS on um, on our client device. So I'm going to be using uh, my iPhone for this. So let me just pull up my iPhone mirroring here. All right, so we have our iPhone up here and to set the DNS on uh, uh, an iPhone, we're going to head on over to our settings and open up Wi-Fi. And then from there, I'm going to click on the I there. And we need to scroll down and we're going to configure DNS and we're going to select manual. I'm going to remove my router and I'm going to add 192.168.1.5. Click enter and then save. And then from here, we should start to see some queries coming through, which we do right away. So if I was to, I'll never know how to get out of this. There we go. So if I open up Safari here and say, uh, and head on over to amazon.ca, we're going to see queries starting to be um, coming through, some blocked, and uh, let's use another one like Google because that's pretty um, intense. And then we'll just do a random search for uh, Apple Care One, which is not available in Canada yet, which I'm not too happy about, and uh, nothing's happening. Okay, let's uh, look up uh, Pi-hole block lists. 
Okay, so we can see here that the queries are coming through and we're, we've got 24 blocked already. Well, let's go ahead and look at those blocked queries and we see a ton of ad tracking uh, being blocked here. So PyHole does do what it says and uh, we're not using it for ad blocking here in this instance because that would go against YouTube's terms of service and I'm not going to show you how to ad block, but this is definitely a way to stop ad tracking, which uh, does not go against the TOS for YouTube. Now, I'm not going to show you how to ad block. However, if you go and search for Pi-hole block lists, you will find a ton of um, a ton of uh, block lists that will uh, help you out with with uh, specific blocking of things. Um, however, that's not what this video is about, and I'm not going to show you how to do that. Um, because, you know, I like my YouTube channel and I don't want to have a strike. So um, there are there are ways to do it. Um, however, there are other creators that will show you how to do it, uh, maybe on other platforms or uh, YouTube. But uh, yeah, those those videos tend to be demonetized or uh, removed entirely. So that is pretty much it on how to get your uh, Pi Hole instance set up. Now let's go over to our router and let's, I'll show you how to uh, uh, set the uh, router up to use that specific DNS service. So if we go over to settings and then we go over to internet and then we, well, where are we here? Uh, primary WAN. We can see here that uh, we can set the primary server and the secondary server. Now, if we were to set this to the um, pie hole here, we can, we'd have to remove the uh, secondary here. Um, well, we can leave it, but uh, to make sure that our router is using our pie hole instance, I do recommend leaving this blank. And then from there, we can go over to our uh, pie hole instance. And we can actually set a uh, more DNS here. So this is using Google by default. Uh, I do not like using Google. So I set mine for Cloudflare. And then we would do save and apply. And then that way, if uh, Pi-hole doesn't have the uh, DNS logs for whatever you're trying to view, it will use Cloudflare and then filter it through uh, Pi-hole. So that is pretty much it for getting Pi Hole set up. Um, it's super easy to use, um, something that I routinely use and uh, uh, not on all my devices. Like the reason why I don't have it set on my router is because uh, our work computers for uh, our day jobs for my wife and I, uh, they they do not like being filtered through Pi Hole. We have VPN issues, so um, that's why I don't use it on the router side. I only set it for specific clients. Um, and then, of course, with Pi Hole, you can always block specific websites. And, you know, so if you don't want your kids looking at porn or anything like that, um, th there are uh, ways to, to um, set that up through uh, Pi Hole here. But the main concern was that the password wasn't being set for, for people and uh, they didn't understand how to do it. So that's what this video was about. It was about uh, showing people who were having issues with setting the password. And um, I, I really hope this helps. Uh, it's, it's a great service that uh, I've been using for a number of years. Um, of course, you know, to, to show you this tutorial, I did delete my instance and then reinstall it. So that's why my numbers are so low here. Uh, but other than that, uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get some use out of this. Uh, if you're still struggling, leave a comment down below or jump into the Discord and I will do my best to walk you through it. Uh, but after all that said and done, I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like this content. Uh, uh, let me know down below if there's anything else you want to see covered. And with, uh, with all that said, take it easy, everyone. Enjoy the heat out there if you're, uh, uh, you know, uh, lucky to have some time off during the summer here. And I will catch you in the next one. Where the hell?
harem scarum, diddle them darum, whipsy diddly dandy dee. 